Hello, welcome to my talk on potential flow theory for incompressible flows, part two. A simple example. In this talk, I will first describe the problem. This is a very simple problem, but the relevant principles are not that obvious. And then I will make an analysis on the problem and the solutions to the problem, step by step. And then the application of Bernoulli's equation to the problem, and the discussions on the real pipe flows. The example is a long horizontal pipe. With the length l zero and the diameter d, and the flow velocity at the inlet is u zero. The flow in the pipe is assumed as the rotational, the potential flow. We need to find out the flow, the velocity distribution in the pipe, and the pressure change along the pipe. For such a flow problem, due to the asymmetry of the horizontal pipe, the flow would be asymmetric based on the physics analysis and the experience. As such, the problem can be treated as a 2D problem. See the plot as this. In 2D. The Laplace equation would be given as this. Here, phi is the velocity potential function, and the boundary condition would be given as this at y equaling to plus and minus r. This is essentially the long penetration condition. That means the fluid would not penetrate through the pipe wall. And、uh, at the inlet, the flow velocity would be given as u zero here at x equaling to minus l zero divided by two. To solve the problem, we need to find the the velocity potential function phi to satisfy the Laplace equation, as well as to satisfy all the boundary conditions. Now, based on the physics and the no penetration condition on the paper wall, we can assume there will be no flow in y direction in such a problem. That is, v equaling to zero. This means the partial differentiation of the velocity potential function with regard to y is zero. This would lead. The second order partial differentiation of phi with regard to y is zero. Then the Laplace equation would be reduced as this simple one. Since it is zero, so we can see the first order partial differentiation of the velocity potential function with regard to x would be a constant. Now we apply the inlet condition at x equaling two minus l zero divided by two. The velocity is u zero. Therefore, we can obtain the constant c is u zero. Then the equation can be expressed as this. So we can easily find the solution of the potential flow in the pipe given as phi equaling to u zero times x. Here, the potential function phi is taken zero at the origin of the coordinate, and then we can easily see the solution would satisfy the boundary condition at the wall y equaling to. Plus and minus r, the fluid velocity on y direction is zero, and if we apply this into 
this expression, it is zero. And uh, we can also obtain the velocity component at the inlet. So we can see the solution phi equaling to u0 times x would be the only and the correct solution to the problem because the solution would satisfy the Laplace equation as well as the boundary condition. So from the potential function, we can easily find the velocity distribution would be given as u calculated as this and the v calculated as zero. That means the potential flow in the horizontal pipe would be uniform, so the flow distribution would be all u0. Now we can apply the Bernoulli's equation for the potential flow in the horizontal pipe. For a steady potential flow, the Bernoulli's equation is given as this. And for this problem, a horizontal pipe Z would be constant. Hence, we can take Z as zero. Thus, the modified Bernoulli's equation would be given as this. Here, P0 is the total pressure of the flow. It is a constant. Since for the uniform flow in the pipe, there is no change in the flow velocity. Hence, the fluid pressure in the pipe would be a constant given as P equaling to P0 minus this. Therefore, for the uniform flow in the pipe, the pressure drop delta P would be zero. In the next few slides, the discussions would be made for the real flow in the horizontal pipe, and uh, we will see how the potential flow would be linked with the real flow in the horizontal pipe. When the flow velocity is small and uh, the Reynolds number is smaller than 2300, the flow in the pipe would be laminar. As it is shown in the analytic solution to the Navier-Stokes equation. The flow is rotational. So the laminar flow has an analytic solution. The velocity distribution would be given as this. Here, in this expression, the pressure gradient along the pipe is assumed a constant. That is, delta P over delta X is a constant. Obviously, such a flow is driven by the pressure difference, and that the pressure drop in the laminar flow is proportional to the flow velocity. That is, delta P is proportional to the velocity U. When the flow velocity is increased, and the Reynolds number is larger than 2300, the flow in the pipe would become unstable. And when Ie is larger than 4000, the flow becomes turbulent. So in such a flow, the flow can be divided into boundary layer, C here and here, as well as the a rotational flow in the middle of the pipe, away from the wall. See here. So this is a real turbulent flow, and near the pipe wall, there are boundary layers, and in the middle of the pipe, the flow can be regarded as a rotational flow. And from the experience, the pressure drop in such a turbulent flow would be proportional to the flow velocity squared. That is, delta P would be given as this. Here, C mu is the pressure loss coefficient. 
So when we increase the velocity more, the neuron's number becomes larger, the boundary layer would become thinner. Thus, the rotational flow would be more dominant in the fiber flow. In such a flow, the pressure drop is mainly caused by the boundary layer. However, the thinner the boundary layer, the larger velocity gradient near the fiber wall. Thus, the pressure drop in such a fully turbulent flow is still proportional to the flow velocity squared, given as this, same as in the previous slide. In the extreme case, when Neyland's number is infinite, that means the boundary layer would become infinitely thin, thus all flow in the pipe would become irrotational, and the flow in the pipe would become uniform, see here, as we seen in the potential flow. In reality, to achieve the condition of the irrotational flow, that is, the Reynolds number is infinite, we can either increase the flow velocity u0 to infinite, but in practical applications, the velocity is always given as the limit value. Or we can assume the fluid viscosity mu is zero. This is the theoretical assumption, which would lead to a zero drop of the pressure in the pipe as we have shown in the previous slide for the potential flow in the horizontal pipe. For most pipe flow, the Reynolds number would be large, and the majority of the flow in the pipe can be regarded as irrotational flow. Hence, for most practical problem, the paper flow can be regarded as irrotational flows, especially if we are only interested in the velocity of the flow in the pipe. However, one problem for the potential flow is the flow is taken as inviscid, hence the flow friction and the pressure drop in the pipe cannot be included. For this purpose, the Bernoulli's equation for the real flow can be modified. The general form of the modified Bernoulli's equation is given as this. Here, HL is the modification to the Bernoulli's equation. The head loss due to the fluid friction and the local vortices. And H0 is the total head. You can find uh, more details in the reference. This part actually is the same as the potential flow. The head loss is calculated as this. Here, CL is the head loss coefficient. This modified Bernoulli's equation can be also expressed as this by timing this expression with low g, and we have this here, p0 equaling to low g h0 is the total pressure, and delta p is the pressure drop along the pipe. It is calculated as low g hl, and if we use the expression for the head loss, we have this, and uh, we can obtain this expression, C mu here is the pressure loss coefficient. Thus, we can see the pressure loss would be still proportional to the velocity squared. One question is how we can decide the pressure loss coefficient, C mu. In the future, I will make the talk on this.